if you are struggling with a disc herniation, you need to be doing these five core exercises to reduce your pain. You might have tried other core exercises, but find that twisting motions or bending motions are just aggravating your symptoms and making them worse. My name is Dr. Grant Elliott, and we have helped thousands of people around the world fully recover from low back pain, disc herniation, and sciatica. And in this episode, number 139 of the Low Back Pain Podcast, I'm going to show you the five core exercises that you should be doing and what exercises you should not be doing if you are struggling with a disc herniation. Real quick, if you have not joined my private Facebook group yet, you need to do so. It is called Rehab Fix Low Back Program. And immediately upon joining, you will receive our free step-by-step Sataka guide. This is the same process that we have taken thousands of our clients through around the world to identify exactly how to fix their sciatica and ultimately become pain-free through a one-on-one coaching program. In this group, you will be able to see our clients and what they're doing for success and additional resources and more free guides. So if you're serious about fixing your back, you need to join this group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program. See you soon. So before I tell you the five core exercises that I want you to start doing for your disc herniation, I'm going to briefly explain the type of exercises that you might not want to be doing. Most disc issues are posterior disc bulges or herniations. Many posterior disc herniations tend to be aggravated by flexion-based movements. This could be sitting long periods. This bending forward motion can sometimes increase the disc pressure that then increases the pressure on that bulge or herniation, thus putting more pressure on these sensitive tissues or putting more pressure on the nerve and creating more sciatica in the leg. So these would look like crunches, sit-ups, leg raises, Russian twists, or other rotational exercises that you might want to try. These could aggravate your symptoms. I'm not saying these are bad for you or bad for everyone with a disc herniation, but the majority with active disc herniations that are sensitive right now might find that these movements are sensitive to them and might flare up their symptoms. This ultimately results in you feeling more pain and feeling aggravated as a result of trying to exercise this away. So instead, these five core exercises that I'm about to give you will help you improve all of those because they're so powerful. These are variations of the classic Paloff Press exercise. This is a very classic low-level exercise that is prescribed to a lot of people with lower back pain because of the benefits it has on the core and improving anti-rotation strength. Now, I'm gonna give you five progressions to this classic exercise. And if you are an audio listener, I'm going to link a video of all of these exercises in the show notes below. The first exercise is our Palov walkout. You're going to hold the resistance in a traditional Palov press fashion, arms outstretched in front of you with it anchored to your side, and you're going to simply step away from the anchor with a crouched wide stance. This is going to increase the resistance as you step further away if you're using a band, but it's also going to get your hips incorporated, focusing on improving your glute, med, and abductor strength because it is essentially turning into a monster walk or a banded lateral walk. This is killing two birds with one stone as you work on your core, but also start to really reinforce your hips, which is great for multiple types of lower back issues. The second exercise is our Palav March. You're gonna stay in the same place that you're standing, arms outstretched, maintaining that resistance, but now simply march slowly and controlled in the same place. This is gonna alternate forces on your hips and on your core as each leg takes a turn being the foundation for your stance. This is quite challenging and you can be sure to rotate both ways to challenge both sides equally. The third is our single leg Palov, where now instead of marching, alternating back and forth, you're going to hold one leg at a time. So you could still perform the march, but then just simply stay on one leg for a longer period of time, maybe three to five seconds or longer, depending on your current ability. This is going to become very, very challenging, not only from a balance standpoint, but because now there's so much torque on one leg, it is very difficult to maintain a stationary position as your hips and your core and your entire leg and balance are challenged in many different ways that they have not been challenged before. Hey, real quick, if you're watching this video and you're resonating with the things that I'm saying and you're ready to be pain-free, just click the link below and you can schedule a call personally with my team so we can meet with you 
go over your current situation and figure out what you're missing and help you develop a game plan so that you can finally become pain-free. This is for serious people only, so click the link if you are ready to go. Back to the show. Number four, our split stance pal-off press. You're going to get into what looks like a lunge or a split stance position, and you're going to perform the pal-off press in this stance. This is, of course, activating your glutes more, but now getting your legs incorporated as well. This is an isometric on your legs, so we can work on strengthening our legs and our hips at the same time. And of course, once again, it is just a different variation of stimulus on your core. We are challenging your core in many different ways and many different angles. And this is a great athletic stance to get into to also stretch your hamstrings out and stretch your hip flexors out too. And lastly, our kneeling palav, where you go from a split stance, you just simply drop the back knee onto the ground. So one leg is up and one leg is down resting on the ground. This is a bit more challenging because you don't have as much anchor. You're not covering as much surface area, so it's even harder to balance and will start to challenge you way more than some of the standing variations. This is just going to challenge your core and your hips in so many different ways to provide variability in your core stability and spine stability as a whole. These exercises are so great because they're training you to resist rotation, to get stronger through resisting rotation when many disc herniations are sensitive to rotation. So it'll help you build up that strength so that if you are in a rotation-based movement or you're just simply rotating to pick something off the ground or look behind you in the car, your body is more equipped to withstand that. It has greater capacity to withstand these motions. Also, all of these movements have a neutral spine in common. If you are someone where flexion is aggravating your disc, none of these require flexion in the spine. They're all neutral spine based, so you might find them to be much more comfortable than some of the other core exercises that you're currently doing for your disc pain. You might want to start incorporating variations of these into your current regimen so that we can calm the symptoms down and build you up at the same time time. This is going to help you get stronger, get active without flaring up. Now, one key thing here is that you will not fix a disc herniation with core strength alone because most of the time, core strength is not the reason for your pain. Otherwise, strong people would never get back pain. But yet, strong men, bodybuilders, Olympic athletes, CrossFitters get back pain all the time because they're human just like you and me. Core strength is not the reason for back pain. There are other things involved, but these are great exercises that you can work on for your core without flaring up your symptoms, but you must be combining the appropriate rehab exercises that's going to actually fix the disc herniation. So what we do throughout our program is we actually don't do core and spine stability stuff at first. We wait until we address the root issue. We typically find that repetitive movements of the spine or loading the disc in different ways is the most efficient way to reduce your pain, improve your range of motion, and put that disc in a healing environment as quickly as possible. We typically see significant reduction in symptoms within a matter of a couple of weeks if we're loading the disc the right direction. And the most common discs that we work with are posterior discs where sitting for long periods is aggravating, bending over to put socks and shoes on is tough, picking things off the ground, going from a seated position to a standing position can be really tight. These are the most common symptoms that we hear with our disc herniation clients. So we wanna find the right movements of your disc first to massively improve your pain and range of motion in a short period of time. And then once we actually start to address the root problem and move that disc and make it happy, then we start to build on top of that once we have that appropriate foundation. We get that foundation right, then we start to improve your core stability, your spine stability, your hip stability, get you back into squatting, back into deadlifting, doing more advanced things to get you back to feeling 100% athletic. The order of these things is very, very important. And we've had tons of clients who've told us, hey, I can do all these Palov movements, I can do planks for two minutes, I can do all these things all day long, and I still have back pain. What core exercise am I missing? And we say, you're not missing any core exercises. The problem is that you're focusing on your core. That's the problem. You need to actually find the right exercises to address your problem and then get strong 
later because that is not the problem and it's ultimately holding you back from getting pain-free. So let's get the right plan in place first and use these as complementary adjuncts to your therapy to help you get strong in the right ways and reduce flaring up at the same time. But I wanna see you with the right plan so that you can ultimately get pain-free. And if you're curious about what you might be missing and what that plan might look like for you, we'll just simply book a call with us and we will take you through our system and we'll help you discover exactly what you might be missing in your plan so that we can help you get pain-free fast. Once again, be sure to join my Facebook group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program, so you can get additional exclusive content and our free Sataka guide immediately upon joining. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave a five-star rating and review so we can grow this podcast and help reach more individuals who deserve to get results, who feel like they're spinning their tires and getting frustrated in doing so. As always, move more, move in nature, move in the sun. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.